Hi folks and welcome back. I got this uh, interesting piece of vintage test equipment here which um, I've got a silent key sale. It's a type CT471C uh, multimeter. Um, this is um, XMOD equipment and it was working. I put some batteries in it. I don't think it's been used for ages and it worked and then it stopped working. So I'm going to have a try and see if I can repair this. Now I don't know an awful lot about these uh, meters but I did a bit of a search on the internet and from what I can tell these are actually quite sophisticated pieces of equipment. I think one of the things that's quite useful about them or quite good is that they can uh, measure RF voltages, so it's at fairly high frequencies. I don't know if you've ever tried using a normal meter, and if you're trying to measure alternating currents, it's sort of, you know, anything above a few thousand uh, hertz, even more. Sometimes yeah, um, the multimeter struggles with it. I know this meter here, for instance, when I was playing around with some switch mode power supplies, measuring the output voltage, uh, it, it didn't really um, register. My Fluke multimeter, however, can um, it's not too bad for that. So anyway, I've got this thing and it's quite interesting the way it works. It's, uh, it's pretty complicated. So it's got a built-in power supply. It runs off uh, about 4 volts, 4.5 volts from some uh, D-cell batteries. And the input apparently goes through a, a uh, well, it's got DC uh, amplifier or some sort of amplifier here. And it also has some sort of oscillator circuitry, um, triangular wave generator, something like that. Which, uh, it's probably one of these other circuit boards. I think this one here actually is for the power supply. And it then sort of uh, uses this amplifier, the amp and then somehow the uh, signal is processed and you get some sort of reading. It is really complicated compared to a normal multimeter, but it is quite a nice piece of vintage electronics. One of the things with this is filled with really old school germanium transistors and on my initial research, everybody said in well in one of the forums I was looking at that the uh, there were some germanium transistors uh, OC one seventies, and apparently those are quite prone to uh, failure. They get what's called tin whisker, and one particular contributor to the forum, I can't remember which one it was, antique ele antique electronics or something like that, suggested just putting some bog standard 2N3906's PMP transistors, which I did do, but it's still not working. So decided to um, take this board out and uh, see if we can put it on the bench. But I've actually got some new germanium transistors. I'll plonk those in, see what happens. As you can see, the back of this board, there's loads of wires. So I'll have to just make a note of where all those go take a picture that's usually the easiest thing that's what I normally do when faced with this sort of problem but it's really nicely made actually um, you know for something which is probably 1960s I would guess this just looks like sort of 1960s technology it's got a uh, calibration there which is dated September 96 no hang on Calibrated 1995. It's a long time ago, isn't it? Anyway, let's um, let's see if I can pull this board out and see what happens and get it on the bench. Before I <clears throat> start pulling it all apart and ripping out that circuit board, I've um, I've put it back in the box just to show you what it actually looks like and what it comes with, and also showing you sort of what sort of ranges this thing will do. So 
In terms of resistance, you know, this thing goes up from really just a few ohms up to a thousand mega ohms, which, you know, compared to even some of the digital multimeters, that's actually pretty good. And as mentioned, it does measure, you know, fairly high voltages, both AC and DC. So not a bad uh, piece of kit. The lid of the multimeter is also quite good. We've got some nice goodies in here. These are the various RF probes. So this is really quite uh, quite a high-end piece of test equipment. I mean, I'm not sure exactly how much this would have cost brand new in, in 1960s money, but I suspect it was probably not cheap. Anyway, I've managed to dig out some information on this and I'll quickly show you the circuit diagram. So as mentioned, the input of this meter, if you're measuring DC or AC, in terms of DC, the DC voltages, there's an attenuator and a low pass filter. And the output of that then goes to a chopper, which I initially described as an oscillator because it does actually produce a um, waveform at its output uh, which on further research is actually a square wave not a um, not a triangular wave and then that is then goes into an AC amplifier which I think is going to be the uh, area of concern or the area of interest that we need to have a look at probably the chopper and the AC amplifier and then, then you've got a phase sensitive detector and then that goes to the meter and you notice also there's a feedback uh, loop from the output of the meter. And similarly for AC, if you're measuring AC voltages, it doesn't uh, uh, go via the chopper, it goes sort of straight into the amplifier and then into, the, uh, into a bridge rectifier uh, before the meter. So that's a basic block diagram of uh, this meter. I don't particularly want to delve into all the circuitry. Um, the circuit diagram that I have got is very complicated and uh, um, probably make, will not make uh, much sense to uh, to most people. Anyway, uh, that's the simplified version of it. So I think uh, we, we, we can stick with that. Right, so we'll go back to the meter and we'll... Uh, take it all apart and see if we can uh, sort out what's uh, what's the problem with it okay folks well <clears throat> I think I managed to sort this uh, multimeter out but it was uh, pretty much hard work as they say well, luckily I didn't have to completely take this board out uh, as you can see previously just loads and loads of wires underneath there and I did what we usually do in surgery rather than remove it I and uh, excise it I managed to mobilize it and uh, get it sufficiently exposed that I could replace some of these transistors so as you can see there These are the uh, OC170s that I replaced. And despite that, the wretched thing still didn't work. So what I did was basically looked at this chopper thing, the chopper circuit, and that actually tested out okay. I'll just roll it around. It's quite an interesting thing. The way this works is there's a little transformer on the underside of this board. So if anybody else is contemplating fiddling with one of these, um, you know what that is. So that's the chopper circuit board and there's a little transformer which drives the uh, bases of a couple of bipolar transistors, the output of which then 
is fed to the amplifier board. Now the chopper apparently is only used for DC voltages. The, um, the AC input, so if you're measuring AC, um, bypasses the chopper and goes straight into the amplifier after the uh, attenuator. The attenuator boards is all this lot here. You've got loads and loads of resistors which are obviously for dropping the voltage down. And if I turn it round back on the amplifier board. So anyway, to cut a long story short replace those OC-170s and it didn't work so a lot of head scratching I knew the chopper circuitry worked and the problem was, which it took me quite a long time to figure out, this transistor here Let's zoom in on him Get out a bit of that transistor there was the cause of the problem so what had happened was that one of the leads on this, or a couple of the leads, it must have been a dry joint or something, um, but when I wiggled it, it actually came out. Uh, so that was a problem, but I didn't spot it because the, um, the it was broken off right inside the PCB. Uh, so that was a bit of a problem. So it always pays, always, I think if there's any lessons to be learned from this, um, you know, just when you go, when you've got this old vintage gear with PCBs, you know, go around with your finger wiggling all the components, especially the transistors, make sure the, uh, they are actually in place. Uh, so anyway, I, I fixed that, put that transistor back after cleaning up the leads and hey presto, it actually works now. Um, so yeah, it's actually quite a nice piece of equipment. I'll just give you a quick demo of it, there's not much to see, we'll just we'll connect it up to the power supply and you can uh, have a quick look at the movement. So I've got it connected up to my bench power supply, which is reading 4.2 volts and my meter, getting, my light is reflecting on it, it's also reading 4.2 or thereabouts, so it's uh, pretty good. Um, you can switch the range around a bit. Yeah, pretty pretty good. Quite quite accurate on measuring DC voltages. One thing I like about these meters, which is one of the reasons why I decided to keep it, I was very close to scrapping it because I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. But with a bit of perseverance, I managed to source it. But one of the things I like about these is that you can measure high voltages, and uh, we do a lot of that. We do a lot of that in the WTF shack, so I thought it would come in handy. So there we go, a quick repair job and uh, thanks for watching.